you have drawn and transferred your um, George O'Keefe flower, transferred it on, and I went ahead and added some um, acrylic pen, which is waterproof, and um, you don't have to outline it with something, but um, it, it might be fun to give that a try, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So you've already accomplished that, and you've done your little practices with graded wash and wet into wet petals. So um, we're gonna keep these and use these to practice some backgrounds. So your next um, thinking is, uh, you're gonna paint your flower now. So you have to kind of think of a plan. What colors of paint are you gonna actually use on the flower? Mine was uh, a purple flower. So I thought if I outlined it in the complementary color, which was yellow, that would work nicely. You're gonna put crayon or some other waterproof material. Now this is the poster that I had for my my high school kids and my middle school kids. So um, you don't have to do it exactly like this, but I think it's nice to see it all outlined. Um, so you're gonna go over your pencil line, use a contrasting color and press hard if you're gonna use crayon. Uh, the wax will resist. And then what technique are you gonna use on the painting? Are you gonna use wet into wet petals? Are you gonna use a graded wash? Are you going to do each petal separately? Or are you going to do the whole flower all at once with the little tiny petals outlined? Are you gonna use a stick or a palette knife um, for the lines or the veins? And then your background, we'll talk about that in just a minute. You, you wanna have a strong background. And then on the um, Google Classroom, I've, I've done a document that you'll wanna really read carefully about thinking about um, your decisions on this painting because uh, you've got a lot of decisions to make here and it's best to think them through and plan it before you just plunge right in. So you're gonna do the background last on this particular painting. Um, I told the kids that they needed to choose one texture technique. You don't have to do these, but it might be fun to, to try them, especially after you practice them. Salt, plastic wrap, using a stick for textures in the background or um, a tissue for lifting like clouds or soft things going on in the background. I also suggest wet into wet, where you wet the background areas. If they're trap negative shapes, then wet each one separately and do that separately. Or if it's one big empty shape like in mine, um, I have a few trap places here, but mostly it's one big area. So I'm gonna wet it first so that I don't end up with dry places, especially when the weather's really dry. Um, if you, it, it'll sort of dry in a stripe. So I'm gonna put this away. So um, I, I'm showing you a couple of different things um, that we can use to resist. This is crayon, wax crayon. This is, uh, I had a box of soy crayons that I have had for years, so I thought I'd give them a try. Oil pastels, um, because oil and water don't mix, just like wax and water, this will also be a resist. So I used oil pastel on this. Or you could use a waterproof black pen if you wanna have black outlines, a Sharpie or a bold pit pen. I use the B for bold. Um, and then these are the acrylic pens. And I have a set of Molotow, M-O-L-T-O-W, something like that. I wrote it on the, the uh, Google Classroom. And there's other brands of acrylic pens also. Or you could use masking fluid. Now I used a masking fluid pen to write this. Um, you could also use regular bottle of masking fluid. If you're gonna dip a brush into it, take uh, some soap, this is brush cleaning soap, and suds it up like a bar of soap on your brush and leave the soap in the brush and then dip it in the masking fluid. Otherwise you will ruin your brush this way it will wash right out after you're done. And you wanna use a fairly small brush because it fluffs up once it gets that soap on it. So um, I'm gonna show these different techniques on this. 
but you guys can go ahead and use your, your little practices, you know, try some salt, try some um, uh, saran wrap and so on. So let's go ahead and try, um, I will, use a big brush here and let's try some salt first so I'm gonna gonna wet this and I'm gonna use a contrasting color cool colors most of these I did in warm colors so um, I was thinking ahead of my of my painting so here's an ultramarine blue here's a um, cerulean or I, actually it's a manganese blue so I'll just go over this and I can still see through the yellow isn't showing up quite as bright as I would like it but so then I'm gonna if I if I wait for it to be a little bit drier I'll have like this is actually starting to dry already because it's an up part of the uh, the paper um, it's gonna be smaller little um, sparkles of salt if it's real wet and you don't need to kill it with salt but um, just make sure your salt is dry you don't want to dip your fingers in a tub of salt and have your fingers wet and that'll introduce water into it so you just kind of have to leave it alone for a while um, let's try a little bit of purple on the masking fluid here and then later on we will peel that off so that'll leave a white background. I'm going to let that dry a little bit more and then sprinkle salt on it to show how it's, uh, it's going to act differently than this salt hopefully. Okay so let's try Sharpie. Actually, maybe I'll go in and use the warmer color on this. Let's get some new gamboge and some Scarlet Lake. So you can see these waterproof pens. Um, we'll keep but they won't they won't bleed so now we're going to do the the plastic wrap and just you know it doesn't have to be saran wrap it can be bonds brand or whatever um, <clears throat> but you don't really it, <laughs> it's not really tricky at all it's very simple and you you have to do it when it's wet and you just lay it on there and push down and that's it that's how hard it is so it sort of automatically creates these little air pockets um, that you can, you know, you can see if you push it down, you'll lose the air pockets. And if you kind of uh, try and move it around and fluff it up, then you won't have them either. So we're just, and you have to let it dry completely. It's not going to do anything. Um, and I could push down a little bit, but it's not going to do anything if you lift it up. Now, if you have a lot of little sections, you can take one giant piece of saran wrap and put it on. Um, but uh, if you have smaller sections, you can take little individual pieces of saran wrap and put it on there. Uh, just be careful. If you have a real, um, oops, if you have a real watery area um, that's real wet on your background, and then you and, and a lot of wet, wet, wet paint near the edge of the flower and you lay this on it might squish into the edge of the flower so you have to be a little bit careful so you can see the salt is starting to do its thing let's see i hope i haven't waited too long on this um i kind of forgot about it so we'll see if this does something a little different and you can see it's creating this wonderful almost like um uh, frost on a window kind of look to it this might be closer to sparkles of stars in the sky or snowflakes, uh, but I may have let it dry too long. It has to be wet. So let's put this aside, and then we'll, we'll see how this resists too. And again, um, 
we're going to go in with a cool color. So you can see the Cran Resist worked really well with the oil pastel. And if my, if my um, cr uh, acrylic pen does, doesn't end up working enough, I can always go back over it after it's dry because the acrylic pens are uh, opaque. Or I could go back over it with a watercolor, I mean with a, um, a crayon also. Okay, so here's another thing. Um, let's. So the soy crayon works good too. Oil pastel, soy crayon. Here, let's just go ahead and do all of this. So good old wax crayon works great. The only thing is, this is somewhat of a smooth piece of paper, and your arches. Uh, cold press might be a little bumpy, so you might get a little bit of a texture on your line. Okay, so there's a couple of things here we're going to try. One of them is uh, tissue. So you can kind of roll around the tissue and make it look like clouds. Or if you had a, a wet into wet with several colors, maybe I'll try that. <clears throat> I'm going to go in with some permanent rose. Let's try that again. So you have to make sure you're using a clean part of the tissue. So you don't want to keep pushing, keep finding a new clean part. And it could read as distant or, or out of focus things going on in the background. And I'm going right over the the words, but uh, you would want to be going around your flower and just as a background kind of thing. So tissue is another thing. Give it a try. See how you like it. And then um, using a stick or a um, palette knife or a credit card. This is a, a skewer. This is a stir stick. Um, another idea is to go in and if it's getting really dry like this is, darn, it's such a dry day. Here, let's we'll be wet it. Now you can see how, if it's really wet, the, the damage on the paper is gonna make a dark line. So I'm going in and making a dark line. And if it's a little drier, it'll be a light line. So, so what you actually are doing is damaging your paper. If you use a credit card, you can scrape away a little wider area. So you could indicate a leaf or a something going on in the background. Okay, so that's scraping, using a tissue, using salt, and where's our saran wrap? Let's see how this coming, is coming along. See how these salts are uh, a little bit more, because it was drier, you'll get more individual little sprinkles. This one is doing large masses. Okay, so I shouldn't really wait more for this to dry, but let's just see if we can lift it up and get something going. Yeah. The longer I wait, the more distinct it'll be. So that gives a nice um, feeling of a forest or branches. And then the nice thing about the saran wrap is once it's dry, you can go in and, and actually paint in some of these areas like negative painting and make these lighter areas stand out more or cover over them. Okay, so those are the, the techniques of background. And now I'm gonna actually paint a little bit on my, oops, sorry, bumped the camera there. Um, see if I can paint a little bit on my flower. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but. So I detached this. And here's my, here's my reference. So remember, there's different techniques you can try. You can wet your petal and drop several different colors in. You can do a graded wash. Um, I might even do a little lifting right here with a tissue on some of these light areas. Or go back in and uh, after everything, I think I'm gonna do wet into wet, and after this dry, I can add a graded wash later. So first thing I'm gonna do is wet it. And I think I have some clean water there. And maybe I'll get rid of this because I don't, I want it to be fairly bright. So I'll just have my permanent rose in the, in the blue. So I'm going to wet a petal here first, and then I'm going to use a stick to create those 
those um, lines. And I've got to do it, since they're dark lines, I've got to do it when it's fairly um, wet. Now remember, I'm not trying to reproduce this. I'm thinking like George O'Keefe and, and abstracting it. So um, it's okay if it looks uh, doesn't look realistic. Um, think about your birds that you did where they aren't uh, perfectly like real birds. So um, I can try... I'm going to get some cobalt blue and verditer. I think the ultramarine's a little dark. And it's going to have water in it too here. So it's going to be drier. And maybe I'll use a little bit of, of a tur more of a turquoisey blue in there too. some permanent rows. Dab that in there. You know, I wish I had, on this palette, I don't think I have um, uh, opera. <laughs> that would be a nice color to have too. And then I can also, I'm mixing my, my purple, but I also can use a purple that I already have uh, out, of the, um, out of the tube. So this is uh, Rose of Ultramarine. Here's Permanent Violet. Here's Carbazole Violet. So I, have, I do have some, some nice violets. Um, this Rose of Ultramarine is much, uh, much redder of a, of a purple. So I might want to add a little more blue in there. So I'm just going to kind of let that settle in. I can manipulate it like this, but I don't want to play with it too much um, because then it starts to get muddy. So I'm going to wait for the right moment. I want it to be pretty wet and maybe I can do one more I've got to, got to keep an eye on that I'm going right up to the edge of the crayon or whatever it is you used so you get that nice contrast with the purple and the um, and the complementary color, the yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and try the stick here. Let's use um, a stir stick. And I'm going to look at my reference. It looks like there's one over here, and there's one there. Let's see what happens with the skewer. It's got a really sharp point. Um, a, a toothpick also works. So the, the more narrow the stick is, the different uh, line will be. And then if I use a palette knife, it'll even be thicker. Let's go back to the stir stick. So that's kind of a nice look to it. And let's put a little bit more blue. So this is really, if we're talking about a violet, it's heading, it's kind of light and it's heading more toward a, a, a bluish purple, I think. little hint where you can really see the the two colors separating oops and um dab this 
and uh, the little bit of white in the center. Okay, and then I want to use a palette knife or something again to, I'm looking at this petal. Since it's going to be a dark line, I can do it when it's really wet. This would be great for if you have leaves in your drawing. Um, one, two, three, four. I need two more. <laughs> Although I don't need to follow that exactly. So I, I think that's nice. Uh, and then if I wanted to lift out a little bit more of the white in there, I could actually go in, you know, with my tissue while it's still wet. So I could bring out a little bit more light using my uh, reference as a kind of a guide, okay? And then in this part, um, this will be yellow. So I'll grab a, a smaller brush. And then I better get a clean place here because yellow is it's real easy for yellow to get polluted. really have clean water at this point too but I'll just use this and a little yellow a little of the new gamboge which is more of a orangey school bus kind of yellow and I think I'll go over the whole thing here and then when it dries I can layer a little bit of scarlet lake over this Or I could even do it now. It'll go out of the lines. Um, and let's see what happens. This isn't a really bright yellow. It's got a little greenishness to it. So I might even add a tiny bit of blue into it and dull it a little bit and I get like I said I can always go back in and redefine it later lift out a little of that make it lighter and just kind of play with it a little bit okay and then my background decisions i would i would paint this green but um i'm thinking i would do a since it's purple i would want and cool colors i would want to go with warmer colors but i don't want a bright bright green so instead of using a turquoise blue and a lemon yellow i might use the new gamboge and a, a cobalt blue or a, a, an ultramarine blue and get it more of an army green and then um, let the colors kind of bleed together. Maybe do a little tissue in it, uh, maybe a little salt here, or, or you can also do some spattering. It's fun to take a toothbrush and just kind of put water on it and watch for that magic moment and just spatter a little bit on there. Um, I'm going to go in and see what happens if I make this uh, a little bit darker right here. And then that darkness would go all the way around. Okay, so I think you can see where I'm headed with this and uh, have fun with yours. If I blow dry this, I can go in and make that a little bit brighter and outline it again if I need to. Um, and this orange, I think, will stand out uh, a little bit more once I get all the purple in there. Okay, have fun. Don't forget to practice your background textures.